3.1 and 3.2 um, and all of chapter three is really about polynomial functions. So in this chapter, we're gonna learn what is a polynomial function, how to graph it, um, and how to understand it through graphing mainly. Okay, so uh, first of all, what is a polynomial function? So polynomial just by the word itself um, just means multiple numbers, multiple terms. We knew that from grade nine, polynomial, many numbers. And then it's a function. So let's get some examples of polynomial functions. Polynomial functions are anything that have natural numbers, or I guess integers, positive integers, as the exponent. So it could be anything. It could be like y to the, sorry, x to the 96 plus x to the 45 plus 2. Okay. Anything that doesn't have complicated exponents or roots or trig is just straight up a bunch of x's with an exponent. That's as, as easy as I can explain it, I guess. Um, just be aware of when I say that there's, there shouldn't be fractions in the exponents. A lot of guys see questions like this, like, no, nah, it's not a polynomial function because I see a fraction. That's x to the 14 divided by 3. So the polynomial function is being divided, not the exponent. Um, so just be aware of that. So some non-polynomial functions. Root x, 2 to the x, sine x. These are not polynomial functions. Even if I see something that has x to the negative 14, I'm going to write down the rational function as well. Um, these are all not polynomial functions, so be aware. So this could be a tricky one because you see the 14, and I just said that, you know, x to whatever number, whole number, um, is good to go. Let me write another one down, actually, now that I think of it. Okay, even decimals of the exponents, like that's, these are not polynomial functions. So basically, the complicated ones are not polynomial functions. And in chapter 3, we're going to be dealing with those guys. So it's easier because we're getting rid of all this complication. Okay, well not really because you still got to determine the difference. You have to know what these are to know that they're not those, you know? Okay, so how polynomial functions behave is my favorite explanation. Um, so you know from grade 9, y equals x. y equals x looks like this. We know from grade 10, y equals y, obviously. y equals x squared. This is actually absolutely not how it looks like. Looks like this. And then maybe in grade 11, you kind of played around with the idea of x cubed. And it looks like this. So I'm going to explain the main differences with exponent 1, 2, 3, to infinity, all of them. Once you understand one, two, really just one and two, you'll understand all of them. So y equals x looks like this. Look at the end behavior. The end behavior is going down to infinity this way and up to infinity this way. Now what I'm gonna say is this is true for all odd functions. Now I'm not talking symmetry, I'm talking to the exponent one, to the exponent three. Look at the behaviors at the end. They're the same. There's just some stuff happening in the middle that we don't care about right now. But this and this looks the same. You know how y equals x to the 97 looks like? Ish, not really, but ish. Starts here, some stuff happens here, and it goes up here. Okay, so we don't care about this stuff. I, it's not how it looks like, but it could get complicated to look like this. What I'm saying is, this is not what we're interested in right now. We're interested in those guys. And those guys are the same for every odd exponent. Okay, the end behaviors are key. Now, same thing with even exponents. When you have an even exponent, the end behaviors are the same. This goes up to infinity, this goes up to infinity. So if I have something like x, y equals x to the 46, What's x to the 46? Well, it's even, so it looks like this. Something that I don't care about, and bam, back up. 
Okay, again, we're not interested in this yet. We will at the end of the chapter, but for now you need to focus on the end behaviors and the differences. Okay, now, what if questions don't look like these monomials? These are pretty straightforward, they're easy. Yeah, I agree. What if they look like bells? No. Okay, what if they look like y equals, I don't know, negative five x to the four, plus 3x3 minus 2x plus 7. Okay, it's in standard form. There's a bunch of stuff going on here. You're going to have to factor this eventually, some stuff that you can play with in order to graph this accurately. But we don't care about that. The only thing that we're going to care about in polynomial functions for 3.1 and 3.2 is something called the leading coefficient. Now the leading coefficient is the number and sign in front of the highest power in the polynomial function. Mr. Moser, can you go to portable 3 please? Mr. Moser, portable 3. Okay, so the highest power here is x to the 4, so this is an x to the 4 function. My leading coefficient is negative 5. That's all I need to know. So think of this like a parabola. You, you know that if a parabola opens up x squared, negative x squared, bam, opens down. Negative infinity, negative infinity. This is going to behave in the exact same way. Some stuff happens, opens down. Okay, it behaves the same way as a parabola. Don't mind the inaccurate number of turning points. I'm not even going to get into that yet. Um, but as long as you can take away the end behavior, um, you should be good. Okay, so let's do one more. What if we have a, let's go here. What if we have an ugly even function? Or what if I do this? Look at that. What's the leading coefficient? Some guys right now are thinking of the 5x to the 14. That is false. x to the 17 is a leading coefficient. Sorry, the leading coefficient is actually negative 3, not 3. Okay, so this is my leading coefficient because this is my highest power. Negative 3, the exponent is odd. So this, you should already know, odd functions look like this. But it's negative, so it switches. So from this, so look, parabolas, negative parabolas, boom. Lines, negative lines. So if this looks like this, right, with a squiggly line in the middle, if there's a negative sign in front, like that negative 3, switch it. So the end behavior is now infinity here and negative infinity here. So this function looks like this with some stuff going on in the middle here. Okay, again, this is inaccurate, I know, but um, you gotta get that end behavior down. You have to get that end behavior down. Okay, so things to take away. All you have to look at in a polynomial function, first of all, is to recognize it. Okay, my exponents are integers. Um, they're not negative, sorry, they're positive integers. I don't have any root x or two to the x or sine or one over x, anything that I got, fractional exponents, rational functions, nothing like that. Then I look for the highest power, and the number in front is basically the only thing I care about. I take that x to the 17, I know that's an odd number, so it's going to look like this. Is this a positive sign or a negative sign? And then switch the end behaviors accordingly. That's it. Same thing with the even functions. Look for the highest power. Four, that's your even function. Look for the number in front. Oh, it's negative, so the parabola, it's not a parabola, but the parabola opens down. Okay, now you know your end behaviors.